in today's video, I'm going to show you Lucy and how she did at our show Rose and May at the Paso Robles Horse Park. So I took Lucy and did the ticketed cross rail warm up classes. Um, I guess not really classes, like practice rounds basically. And I used that to give her a little show experience. So in the past, the issue I've had with Lucy is that the whole show environment kind of sends her off her rocker. She gets really stressed out, she starts having panic attacks, and she can't focus on what I'm asking her to do because she's just so, so worried. So going to Paso, my main goal was to be able to have her relaxed and confident enough that I could take her in the warm-up ring and school her. And then my secondary goal, if that went well, was to go ahead and do the cross route classes and just get her an experience going into the show ring, jumping a course, and give her an idea of what showing is all about. So let me go ahead and jump right into showing you a few clips of our warm up on the first day, and then I'll show you our first our round on the first day, and then a little bit of warm up the second day, and our round the second day and kind of talk you through what was going on, how I approached it, what I want to work on, and um, yeah, so let's jump right in. All right, so in this warm up, you can see that Lucy is very tense. Here she decides to pick up this little canner because I think the horse behind her got her a little worked up. Um, I'm riding her pretty short because if I give her too much space, she'll just completely spiral out of control. But my main goal in this little warm up here is to get her forward and long through her body versus what she wants to do, which is get to get short and quick. So I'm using my rein to kind of develop some bend, get her a little bit softer. And then when she softens, I can float some rein, see if we can maintain this pace without her taking the rein and running. So here again, I'm not really sure what set her off, but I'm just saying, nope, let's come back to a trot. And then when she trots, you can see I give a little release of the rein and I encourage her to go forward. So that forward into the hand is so, so important. And what we've been struggling a lot with, with her, especially when she gets tense. So here I kind of abandon that forward into the hand and just brought her back to a walk because I think this bonnet is kind of pissing her off a little bit. Um, so it does take me this entire time to get her to walk. And then I went ahead and asked um, for someone to help me take this bonnet off of her since I think when it flipped up, it was just making her more pissy. I used that little turn there to help get her get her quieted and back to the walk. So once the bonnet's off, I think I did a little more trot warm up, and then I went ahead and did some canner. You can see she's quite tense. And then we're coming towards a cross rail right now, and as she comes up to the cross rail, she has like a little panic attack. Um, but she was really good, she did listen, she found her spot, she didn't run through me. Um, in this canner, I am trying to ask her to slow down a little bit. You can see how she starts swapping leads. And this is all kind of your normal Lucy having a panic attack. So all you can really do is say quiet, redirect. I brought her down to a trot that gave us a little bit of a better approach, made it a little easier, but she just totally grabbed my reins and took off after. So again, I wanted to bring her back. There's a really fine boundary with Lucy of setting boundaries while also allowing her enough space to have relaxation. If you take too much and put her in a box, she has a complete meltdown, but letting her take over gives her more anxiety. So really keeping her as relaxed as possible is the challenge and figuring out how much you need to do to get that and how much not to. So these cross rails, she's really wanting to bomb off of after. So my goal right there was to just tell her like, look, you need to stop after the fences. And we didn't really get anywhere in the warm up. I kind of just said, screw it. Let's go into our class and see if things get any better. And so that's what we did. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. I 
I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks, this and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay, alas, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. And the pettiness, a oh, reflection of the emptiness, hilarious. You think you're with my time, you're delirious, mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior, inferior. You know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag. I want you to hear words, you can say them back. I want you to feel free from the chains at last, and to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah. Now that I've been put through I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I'll be in incompetent Mental health is confidence Dreams and some honestness I'm not here to save the day That's for you to take away I could play a million mind games But instead I say Something not illogical Something that is topical Alright, so the takeaway from that course Is that I had way more control than I expected to have Which is probably surprising watching it But if you know Lucy And you've seen how jumping her was Even a month ago Um you would understand. I was very happy with the level of control I had. I was able to get straight to all my fences and I was able to get all of my distances to my fences. And that is a big win for Lucy. Ultimately, I'm going to be competing her in the jumper ring. I don't need her super slow and steady, but I do need her organized enough and rideable enough that we can get to our fences. So that was kind of the headspace I was coming from teaching her to listen enough that she can stay organized. The biggest critiques I have of that course was she was so, so very tense going into the arena. And then I kind of started off okay with some sort of control and a little bit of a nice, nicer, steadier pace. But by the end of the course, we were getting faster and faster. She started scrambling in her corners, which is what she does when she's too tense to organize her feet. Um, so in that sense, I wasn't too happy with the end of the course compared to the beginning. But the fact that she went out there and she was game to do all the fences, I am so, so stoked with. I've had a lot of problems with Lucy being worried about the jumps, not wanting to go over them, trying to stop, refuse, run out, bolt them, etc. So. Throughout that course, I never once felt from her that she was thinking, I can't do that fence. I was just feeling she was a little anxious about it and thinking she wanted to get over, go, get over it faster. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Um, for where we are, I think it was a really big win. The other thing about this, this day for her is that, uh, so Wednesday, the day before this, this is Thursday that video was taken. On Wednesday, Lucy was phenomenal. I was shocked. I have never had her be so good, even at home. We did a few jumps. We did a really nice flat. She was perfect. As soon as I took her out Thursday and got on her, I already felt it was not what I had Wednesday. Just getting on her, she was already tense. She was already worried. And I think because she knew in her head she was going into the show ring today, and Wednesday, we had just been schooling. Thursday, she was like, I know I have to go show. And she had such anxiety about that. It's kind of why I started to just, after I had some warm up and it was going really bad, I decided to just bag it with my original plan being, if we can't get around the course in the class, that's okay. We'll just go in the ring, trot around and come back out. Um, I just wanted her to understand that she could go in the ring, have a decent experience, not die, come back out and do it again another day. 
So the fact that we were able to put in a decent round was just, that was awesome. It was way more than I expected from her. So going into Thursday, my hope was, or Friday, sorry, this was Thursday. Going into Friday, my hope was that she would give me a lot more relaxation, understand her job a little bit better and be a lot more comfortable with her job. So let's see what warm up looked like on Friday and then I'll show you her next round in the show ring. All right, so today you can see a huge difference in how she's going. This is more the canner we have at home. I am still riding her really short because I don't want to give her space to get herself in trouble, but this canner is smooth, rhythmic, steady, organized. If we could jump everything with this counter, I would be more than happy. Cause again, she's gonna do the jumpers. She doesn't need to have that long, slow counter. She just needs to be organized and collected. I can nitpick this, she's a bit out behind. She's not quite through her back. But I mean, three months ago, I didn't even know Lucy could move like this. So I'm so thrilled. She came out on Friday just ready to go. So let's see how that translated to the actual show ring. Rub it on and watch it go. Make yourself unstoppable. Dreams are irresponsible, but they're always possible. If you just believe you could be so remarkable. Thoughts in my head, a collage and they spread. I'll be great one day, going off of my meds. No, I'm not giving up. No, I'm not giving in. I will make it to the top, taking off in the wind. I gotta make it. I'm saving every day to taste it. I'm patient, but my mind, it can hardly take it. I'm chasing a dream that I've had for several ages. I'm baking. Modern kingdom for the taking. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Take shit, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. All right, so even though I asked for that long spot and Lucy kind of became unhinged after that, I am really, really happy with that line. I should have known the long spot was a bad choice. Um, when I was on, so the reason I went for that little bit long spot, I know it wasn't even that long, but you could see the effect on her. Um, the reason I did that is because I felt like in that green diagonal before that last line, I had really held her, got her, a little bit chippy and almost sucked back through the line like a little bit behind the pace I'd ideally like and I felt like coming into the last line I was getting a really similar placement so I could have done the exact same thing and really held her gotten her a little chippy gotten her really slow but I kind of felt like I was holding her too much and I needed to find a place I could let her go so that's why I went for the long spot if I were to ride this all over again and be in the same spot, I would honestly probably hold for the chip, then let her get a little longer through the line to get a less chippy spot out of the line. But again, hindsight's 20, excuse me. Hindsight's 20, 20. Um, and, and honestly, that was just my bad. And that's something I need to learn to deal with, with this horse in particular. She will always be one that when you kind of let her jump long, she lands quick. So there are times when that can be useful. And I think there's gonna be a time where I can let her jump long, gallop out of it and be able to bring her back in time to make a corner or something. But through a line, I don't foreseeably think that that's ever gonna be something that's gonna really go well with Lucy. So again, Hindsight's 2020, but I'm so happy that she came into the ring on Friday with this attitude of, 
I know what my job is, I know how to do it, and let's go do it. So still quick forward, but she was aiming for her fences, she was taking me to them, and she was waiting for me to tell her to jump. And that is all I want for Lucy. So the plan is to take her to Woodside, which is uh, slightly less than two weeks away from the end of this show at Paso Robles. Um, it's a schooling show at the Woodside Horse Park. I have entered her in the point sixties, which if you saw this video, you're probably like, wow, <laughs> that's a little ambitious. Yes, it is a little ambitious. Unfortunately, it's the lowest height that I can compete at at Woodside. So I'm going to take her. I might scratch my classes, but I'm going to at least take her. We have been working on some low verticals at home. Um, and I'm recording this about a week after the show, so only a week more till Woodside. And we have been able to do singles and trotting into a few lines at, at the 60s height. So it might be doable. I will keep you guys posted. But moving forward, that is our plan, is to start moving her into the 60s. My hope would be by the end of the year, she's able to do the 70s in a competitive way. So that's kind of the like big goal for Lucy. The immediate goal, I want to try to get her in the 60s at Woodside two weeks from this show that we just did. But I'm not going to push her. I'm not going to take her in the ring to create a horrible experience. So if we get to Woodside and I'm not feeling like she's ready, or even we get in the warm up and I feel like I can't do this with her, I, I will scratch. I have no problem scratching. So we'll just kind of see what happens.